I'd like to do a review of Derek Robinson's Abstract Algebra. He calls it an introduction with applica applications, third edition. He does say up at the top there that it's a graduate text. Do you see the word? So um, I guess the first thing would be to glance at the table of contents. Now, I did not actually go through this book myself yet, but I did look through it pretty carefully, and so I'm just going to give you a survey of what I saw. I noticed that he, like in Dummett and Foot, he starts off with some preliminaries, and uh, he may even start more basic, as sets, relations, functions, the integers. Um, he seems to introduce induction par fairly thoroughly. Um, he doesn't get to groups until chapter three. Um, let's see. So let me click on that. And actually, let me go back to this page. So I noticed that they gave a lot of these identities. You see 1.1.1. Notice, prove as many parts of 1.1.1 as possible. And uh, there's maybe seven exercises here in that section one. So he has exercises by the section but they certainly don't look um, fully elementary. This is more uh, upper level uh, than, than basic. But he, he does seem to go um, at a fairly clear presentation. If we go here, uh, you'll see that he has the Cantor-Bernstein theorem that he brings in here. I can't remember if Dummett and Foot have that or not. If you look on page 89, this kind of gives you a survey of the book. Hopefully I'm not violating anything but, uh, because I am jumping. Notice he has problems and he gives them names on some of them, like days of the week um, and uh, the basket of eggs problem. And he says this ancient problem is mentioned in an Indian manuscript of the 7th century. So I find that nice that he does that, that he names problems and does mention some history in this, which makes it more interesting. On page 91, um, whoops, notice he mentions the RSA crypto system here. Uh, so he certainly um, brings up different topics and applications in this. It does, it is available on Kindle. That's what I'm looking at it. I did notice, um, oh yeah, let me go back for a second to the Cantor Bernstein theorem on page 55 here. Fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four. All right. So you see, here's the Cantor Bernstein theorem. He says the proof is our most challenging proof so far, and some readers may prefer to skip it. However, the basic idea behind it is not difficult to grasp. So I thought that's uh, nice that he mentions difficulty of the proof and that he proves things like that. Um. I believe they didn't get to the uh, Klein, what is it called? The Klein four group, fear group. 
until about page 123. <clears throat> if you look uh, over here, uh, here it is. Yeah, you can see this is the Klein 4 group right up here. That's pretty familiar. Um, this is the Klein 4 group. Oh, he says, which was mentioned in exercise 3.2.7. Uh, his presentation of quotient groups looks fairly clear to me. He proves, uh, he proves a lot of stuff. He doesn't just uh, leave things blank, but he does work a lot of stuff out. So I think it's a little easier than some, some doctoral level texts, which expect even more from the reader. Um, at around page 213, he gets to the Sillo theorems which as you know, if you're listening to this, you probably know it's rather, those are rather important. Right, uh, I believe it's back here. Yeah, Sillo's theorem, which he, he has uh, proofs of that. And if you look, you see he does apply it uh, um, for groups of different orders in here which you do want to see in an algebra book. And he has um, some stuff to do with groups of different orders in his problem set. So I think it's pretty important, and he fulfills that function. So it certainly satisfies as a, a reasonably good upper-level algebra book I'm not sure if I want this to be a first course, though, for somebody. Um, he has the ring of quaternions in here, which you see does it in relative detail. Um, things like Hilbert's basis theorem. Where is it? Here it is, Hilbert's basis theorem, which you see um, he fills in a good amount of details in his proofs. And notice the exercises are not totally trivial. So, um, uh, and you see there's about seven to 11 of them in each, uh, in many of these sections. Now, one thing for a book is you want to know it gets to Galois theory and covers it well and in an understandable way. So if I push forward to splitting fields and exercises, Right? Notice he considers roots of polynomials over a certain field. So he does get into the material that's prerequisite uh, for Galois theory. Talks about reducibility of polynomials, right? And irreducibility. And he does have examples and some exercises. Another important thing at this level is the Jordan canonical form, that you have a reasonable coverage of that. And if we push forward, you see um, he has a section for the Jordan canonical form here. Um, but I will say, uh, uh, and he does have some problems on the subject for that. Now, some things are not in foot in this, dumb it in foot's book. Like if I go a little bit forward, the Schreier refinement um, theorem, I don't think that that's in dumb it in foot. You can correct me if I'm wrong, 
but I don't remember seeing it in there. Um, what is in that I've seen in Dumb It In Foot is the classification for groups. Uh, that is talked about in Dumb It In Foot a bit, but it's talked about in here too. Um, let's see. You'll see here, uh, what is it called? The Fratine group, the Fratine subgroup. And I'm pretty sure Dumb It In Foot has it also. Maybe one reason it's loading a little slow uh, may be because I have this in containers to prevent cookies from being shared uh, between tabs. I'm tempted to let this go and go to a different page. Let's look at this. Constructions with ruler and compass. I'm pretty sure that's covered in Dumb It In Foot and he does do a lot of the proofs for that. Um, if we go to page 558, you'll see that he talks about solvability there. So he is targeting um, the, you know, the quintic, the, the difference between the fourth and the fifth degree polynomials. Sorry about that, people. Solvability of equations by radicals. One of the oldest parts concerned with solving equations, square roots, cube roots. The problem of finding formulas for the solutions of equations of degree five and higher is one that fascinated mathematicians for hundreds of years. And so he is looking at getting into the solvability and insolvability of equations by radicals. I think that's important to know when you get a book, an extensive book like this on algebra. Uh, let's go to 577 here. Sometimes I notice if I go back one and then go forward, I can see it. See polynomials of degree at most four. So they get into polynomials of different, of different degrees, especially between the fourth and the fifth degree. So uh, a reasonably good coverage of Galois theory relative to other texts. What's really interesting about this is he goes way beyond that. Um, let me jump forward to 699, roughly. And you see he goes into category theory here. Talks about categories and functors and stuff like that, which is very cool. I have a, a book on physics that actually does that well. But, you know, you don't, 
uh, it's really graduate level texts that really get into this kind of thing. But for applications, let's go to page 758. So this is, you know, it's not a fancy review. It's a detailed review looking at some of the things the book has. Latin squares and Steiner systems. Um, so you can see it looks like there's some combinatorics and stuff here. Uh, now, let me show you another thing that I'm pretty sure is not in Dumb It In Foot. The Varshamov Gilbert Lower Bound. Varshamov Gilbert Lower Bound um, uh, bounds for the size of code, and he gives, he gives proofs of that. Then near the end of the book, he has an, another totally different application where he talks about algebraic models for accounting systems, assets, um, liabilities, equity accounts, and such. So overall, uh, I think this is a very nice looking book. But I do notice here at the end in the index for the Kindle edition, I don't see any page numbers or links. All they do is give the words in alphabetical order with no direction of where to go. Uh, let me finish with the bibliography because that tells you a little bit about the author. He mentions Halmus's naive set theory. I think that's kind of a classic, along with Hungerford's text on algebra. Some of these other books are big names, but um, um, I'm not going to mention them. McLean's Categories for the Working mathematic Mathematician, I think that's a pretty well-known um, book. Um, hmm. Rotman's Introduction to Theory of Groups and Galois theory, and advanced modern algebra. J.P. Sayers, linear representations of finite groups. Van der Warden's history of algebra. So you see there's uh, some very good books that are mentioned in the bibliography. So I hope that this review was helpful to you. Um, it's, I did not actually use this yet, but that should give you an idea of what's in there. Thank you.